the economy that she wishes to make a statement. Before I call the Minister, I do remind members that in light of social distancing practices being observed by the parties, the Speaker's ruling that members must be in the Chamber to hear a statement if they wish to ask a question has been relaxed. Members do still have to make their name and make sure that their name is on the speaking list if they wish to be called, but they can do this by rising in their places as well as notifying the business office or speaker's table uh, directly. I remind members to be concise in asking their questions. I also remind members that in accordance with long-established procedure, points of order are not normally accepted during the statement or the question uh, period after. And I call the Minister. Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. With your permission, Mr Speaker, I wish to make a statement in compliance with Section 52 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998 regarding a meeting of the North-South Ministerial Council in tourism sectoral format. This meeting was held by video conference on the 25th of November 2020. I represented the Northern Ireland Executive and was accompanied by Minister Conor Murphy. The Irish Government was represented, represented by Minister Catherine Martin, uh, TD, Minister for Tourism, Culture, Arts, Guild, Tax, Sport and Media, who also chaired the meeting. This statement has been agreed with Minister Murphy, and I am making the statement on behalf of both of us. Ministers noted the efforts made to deal with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on the tourism industry and acknowledged the importance of continued cooperation across both jurisdictions to address the impact of COVID-19 as the sector begins to recover. Minister noted activity undertaken by Tourism Ireland to prepare for the UK's withdrawal from the EU and noted that the Department for the Economy and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Scale, Tax, Sport and Media will continue to support Tourism Ireland in this regard. The Council received a report from the Chairperson of Tourism Ireland on the work of the Board since the last uh, NSMC tourism meeting. This outlined the work of the Board in developing and approving and monitoring the business plans for 2017, 18, 19 and 20 and the corporate plans for 2017 to 2019 and 2020 to 2022. Ministers also noted the progress made in delivering Tourism Ireland's performance goals from 2016 to February 2020 and Tourism Ireland's activity during the COVID-19 pandemic since March 2020. The NSMC noted the progress made in developing the COVID-19 recovery planning framework, restart, rebuild and redesign to support the recovery of the tourism industry. <clears throat> the Council approved Tourism Ireland's business plans and budget grants for 2017, 18, 19 and Tourism Ireland's 2017 to 2019 corporate plan, which have been agreed by sponsored departments and finance ministers. Ministers noted that Tourism Ireland's business plan for 2020, including the budget grant provision, has been completed and submitted to sponsor departments and will be brought to a future NSMC meeting for approval. The NSMC noted that Tourism Ireland has prepared an addendum to the 2020 business plan to guide its operations in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Council noted that the Tourism Ireland 2020-2022 corporate plan has been approved at board level but is currently being reviewed in light of COVID-19 and as a, an, an amended plan will be brought to a future NSMC meeting for approval. The Council noted the annual reports and accounts for the years 2015, 16, 17 and 18 which have been led before the Northern Ireland Assembly and both houses in Dublin. Ministers noted that on the 17th of December 2019, the Tourism Ireland Board approved the granting of the general power of attorney as a short measure until further board directors were appointed by the NSMC and that this power of attorney remained effective until the board meeting on the 25th of March 2020. The Council noted the continuation of the appointment of the Chief Executive Officer of Tourism Ireland and also noted recent developments with regard to Tourism Ireland's staffing complement and that officials will take forward discussions on this and report back to a future meeting. The NSMC agreed that officials from the Department of the Economy and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Scale, Tax, Sport and Media will review the existing work programme in the NSMC tourism sector and report back to the next meeting of the Council in this sector. The Council agreed to meet again in tourism sector format in early 2021 on a date to be confirmed. I commend the statement to the Assembly. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, and I call the chairperson for the Committee for the Economy, Dr. Kiva Archibald. And I thank the, the Minister for her statement. Um, tourism is obviously a very important sector here in the North, um, and the pandemic has had a particularly hard impact. But on the couple of months that it was able to open during the summer, there was a, a large increase in, in all island tourism. And just in light of that, what work is being done, particularly in the way of marketing and the development of experience packages? Um, because even though we may have a vaccine online next summer, we are, are likely to still be dependent on very much domestic tourism to compensate for the loss of international visitors. And, and when do you expect the uh, corporate plan for 2020 to 22 to be signed off? Gormogut. Can I thank the member for her um, statement? Um, the marketing of Northern Ireland in the Republic of Ireland is a matter of course for Tourism Northern Ireland, so um, we will be taking forward those issues with uh, Tourism Northern Ireland, but you are also absolutely correct in saying that we have seen a 30% increase in visitors from the Republic of Ireland, and this has been very, very important in supporting tourism businesses over what has been an extraordinary period of time for them. So um, we will be continuing um, that marketing with uh, Tourism Northern Ireland uh, and continuing to use uh, the Northern Ireland uh, brand of Embrace a Giant Spirit within that market to encourage uh, our neighbours uh, in the Republic of Ireland to come uh, and spend some time uh, with us and support our tourism industry. And I call Gary Middleton. And can I thank the Minister for her statement uh, this morning? Uh, Minister, uh, obviously the tourism sector is a vitally important one for us here in Northern Ireland. H how can we use the centenary year of 2021 to promote Northern Ireland as a, a tourism destination across the world? Well, I know in this House um, there will be different views um, on Northern Ireland's centenary. But I think we can come together and use the 100 years of Northern Ireland to drive forward the new economy for Northern Ireland. Um, and uh, not just uh, commemorate, celebrate, um, uh, whatever way we want to look at it, um, that uh, 100 years of Northern Ireland, but look forward um, to uh, no the new economy for Northern Ireland in the future. And tourism has an absolutely pivotal part to play in that. Um, in the next year, we will, um, um, vaccine and COVID allowing, uh, will be uh, driving forward our marketing campaigns in GB because we see that as a pivotal uh, market and one of the easiest markets for a return to tourism activity. We'll be driving forward our campaign with Tourism Northern Ireland in the Republic of Ireland and we'll be looking and working with international tour operators. And there is no doubt that Northern Ireland's centenary will play a key role in that marketing. I call Sinead McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for your statement here this morning. Uh, tourism is an extremely important sector in uh, Derry. Uh, it is also very important um, the coastal route, the Wild Atlantic Way. Um, is the Minister working with the Irish Government to develop uh, a continuation of the Wild Atlantic Way through the, the northern coast? Because the brand is like, so strong worldwide, uh, and we should be locking on to that uh, in terms of growing tourism in Northern Ireland. Um, I uh, thank the member for a question and also agree that tourism is extremely important for the North West um, of Northern Ireland um, and um, that is, is hugely important. Northern Ireland, um, Tourism Northern Ireland uh, just last year uh, launched its own brand for the promotion of Northern Ireland and that is the brand Embrace a Giant Spirit and that is the brand that we've been going out into the GB marketplace and Tourism Ireland has delivered a very specific campaign in September and October in the GB marketplace around the Embrace a Giant Spirit uh, campaign. That is the one that we've been doing when we've been doing our meetings with um, um, buyers from uh, outside and, and other world markets, um, and that is the brand that we will be using. No doubt, uh, the Atlantic Way, uh, the Wild Atlantic Way, is a, a well-known brand, but the brand for Northern Ireland is Embrace a Giant Spirit. And I call Steve Egan. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you very much, indeed, Minister, for your statement so far. I would be aware that Tourism Ireland has been, in the past, been accused of over-promoting Dublin Airport. Bearing in mind that the Northern Ireland Executive provides a third of the budget to Tourism Ireland, could the Minister say what steps she is taking so at least our airports will be equally as supported in the forthcoming years as we deal with COVID and Brexit, as Dublin Airport seems to be, which seems to be an underlying uh, key element of what Tourism Ireland has been doing over the last couple of years? Well, of course, um, Dublin Airport is an important route um, for international visitors um, into Northern Ireland. But I believe that we can support and develop our own airports. And I have had recent conversations um, with Belfast International about routes to North America. And I have had conversations with Belfast City about wider network of routes throughout Europe. I think in Northern Ireland's centenary year, we would like to explore how we can support those routes uh, and grow that network of routes for Northern Ireland um, with our national government. And I've already taken up that challenge with Grant Shapps, uh, the Transport Minister. Nicole Stewart Dixon. Thank you, Minister, for your um, uh, statement this morning. Minister, up to now, um, EU funds have made a considerable contribution uh, to local tourism projects, particularly in border counties. What action are you proposing to take to ensure that we maintain comparable amounts of support after Brexit, given the news yesterday from the Finance Minister that he expects the Prosperity Fund to be, uh, have a deficit of some £70 million in year one? Well, um, of course, um, tourism wasn't specifically supported um, under peace or interreg in the last iteration of those funds, um, although there were um, environmental programmes which would support the tourism sector. Um, I uh, would hope that uh, the wider uh, range uh, of funding um, would support tourism, particularly in border counties. And I, I do think that there is some very, very important work to be done um, in terms of waterways, for example, um, with, with tourism. Um, in the wider question that you ask, um, and I am in the process in my department of preparing a paper on this for the executive. Um, we um, were uh, promised by our national government a like-for-like -like replacement of European funding. I would like to see that um, being um, honoured. Um, and I will do what I can to make sure that that is honoured. Of course, for the Department of Economy, European funding is very important in terms of employability and support for social enterprise and those who are far from the labour market. Uh, and we need to continue that very important work. And I call Gordon Dunn. And thank the Minister for her statement. I think we are all very much aware of the challenges faced by tourism in 2020. What more can Tourism Ireland do to bring life back to our major tourist attractions such as Titanic, uh, the Ulster Folk Museum, the Antrim Coast, and of course getting our tour buses back even back up around Stormont to see what goes on? Um, yes, um, the member makes a really important point. Um, and I have been working um, with Tourism Ireland to make sure um, that Northern Ireland as a brand and as a destination um, is uh, part of their campaigning, but also to look at the research that they have been doing into the general tourism area. So let me share with you some of the conclusions um, that Tourism Ireland um, have come to and, and, and the research and insights um, for the next year in terms of uh, tourism. So, all of the research indicates that holidaymakers are still planning and indeed dreaming of uh, taking their next uh, trip uh, away and that that is an important part of people's personal planning for uh, 2021. And that really the most influential uh, parts of that will be the vaccine, the rollout of the vaccine and the driving down of COVID transmission. Um, over the next number of months. Summer 2021 is seen as the most um, opportune time um, for people uh, to take further breaks. And then you're absolutely right that we need then to drive forward that spend in relation to Northern Ireland. So over the last uh, number of months, um, there has been a campaign rolled out in August, September, and indeed very early October um, around campaigning and 
around Northern Ireland as a tourism destination within the GB market. We allocated three quarters of a million to that campaign, and it was, as I said, um, done under the Embrace a Giant Spirit um, banner. Um, that was ceased um, in the early October because of the increase in the transmission of the virus. But that included talking to travel journalists, influencers, relationships and media partnership with The Guardian, marketing activity in Scotland, social media um, and uh, traditional media marketing. So those are the important things that we've been carried out and we will continue to do so. Nicole Sinead Ennis. Uh, <clears throat> Corlea, um, I thank the Minister for her statement. And the Minister will be aware that the Narrow Water Ridge uh, project is gaining pace. And when that project is finally completed, it will act as a major catalyst for economic and tourism growth in the wider South Down area because we need to go from a region that people pass through into a region that people actually stay in. Now, I believe that can be achieved through extending Ireland's uh, ancient East marketing uh, franchise to the North Eastly counties of Ireland, as opposed to the ambiguous nature of embrace a giant spirit. I'm not even really sure what that means. So will the Minister commit to exploring uh, this with Tourism Ireland uh, and ensure that it's on the agenda at the next NSMC on tourism? Of um, as someone who comes from South Down, um, although lives in Upper Ban, um, I know this uh, part of Northern Ireland very, very well. Um, and uh, we need to drive forward um, tourism in uh, the area. And I look forward to looking at, for example, Kilkeel Harbour uh, plans for expansion, uh, as well as the Narrow Water Bridge. And I think that these will um, drive forward uh, tourism in the area, although real economic development would uh, allow lorries to pass on the bridge uh, as opposed uh, to um, the more limited form that it currently is in. So these are um, really important uh, issues for uh, South Down. But Northern Ireland has just spent, and um, Tourism Northern Ireland has just uh, spent a considerable amount of time using the Embrace a Giant Spirit um, logo um, to sell Northern Ireland to international destinations. Um, that has been going uh, very well, um, and that is the one that we will be using for Northern Ireland in the future. Call Christopher Stafford. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, at least 15 presidents of the United States of America can trace, or their families can be traced back to the province of Ulster. The migration of Ulster Scots down the Shenandoah Valley had a huge, had huge influence, particularly in shaping the development of country music. Can I ask the Minister how her department intends to tap into not only that huge diaspora that exists in the United States, but also that interest in music and the arts as a means of marketing Northern Ireland as a tourism destination? Thank you. I thank the member for his question. And um, one of my very, very first uh, jobs in politics was to chair the Tourism Committee of Belfast City Council, where we set up the Belfast National pa Nashville Partnership, which I still think is, is a very strong partnership um, for the, the, the wider, uh, not just Belfast, but for the wider Northern Ireland, given, as you say, the general interest in music um, and the connections, the historic connections with the area. The greatest thing that we can do is to have and increase our connectivity to the area, not just for tourism, but also for business. It's one of our greatest FDI um, partners um, as well for Northern Ireland is uh, the North America. So we'd really like to see that connectivity enhanced. And that's why I said in response to uh, Mr. Aiken's um, question um, that those are the things that we would need to explore to take full advantage of for the future. And particularly, again, in Northern Ireland's centenary year. I call Gemma Dolan. May I go, can call you? The importance of all Ireland tourism has already been mentioned, but the, the importance of all Ireland tourism to Fermanagh is of utmost importance. And initiatives such as the Shannon and Waterway have provided a unique opportunity for visitors to travel through counties such as Leitrim, Fermanagh, and Cavan via boat. And Minister, you've just mentioned the potential of our waterways. So, has there been any commitments made regarding the further investment into the Shannon Erin Waterway as a major tourism initiative, particularly in terms of the linkages between Clonus and Upper Loch Erin, which were set out in the New Decade New Approach? 
The member asks a, a, a very specific uh, question uh, as well as a general point. Um, I do think um, that we can cooperate and work with our neighbours in the Republic of Ireland to make sure that we can have that exchange of tourists that is very important for the economies of both uh, jurisdictions uh, on this island. Um, and I look forward to actually working to try to ensure that those things happen. Um, and as someone who has Fermanagh links as well, I understand the importance uh, of this uh, to the county. Um, it is hugely important. Um, as yet, um, we have uh, just completed our very, very first NSMC meeting after I don't know how many years, of, I think 2016 was probably the last um, NSMC meeting, um, and these um, issues will come forward in due course. I call Matthew O'Toole. Um, Minister, um the pub trade, the Irish pub, is critical to our international tourist offer on both sides of the border. But because of COVID-19, pubs everywhere, particularly on the island of Ireland, are in terminal crisis. Can I ask the Minister what thought she is giving to a long-term uh, rescue and revitalisation plan for our pub industry? And let me say, I don't think this requires a, a short term. We are going to have to be realistic in the next couple of months. So I'd ask her about this in the long term. What is she doing, both with her colleagues in the south, to think about um, rescuing, revitalising pubs on this island? But also, is she going to speak to the Communities Minister about licensing reform, including reform of the surrender principle, which could mean that we lose a load of these pubs in the coming months if they don't feel able to reopen? Well, the member is quite right that the matter of licensing is a, member, is a matter for the Minister for Communities, um, but um, that is something that uh, we can look at together. Um, the issue um, around uh, the wider pub trade in Northern Ireland, we all know that they have been enormously impacted by uh, COVID-19. Um, and no amount, as I have said many times in this House, no amount of grants or money or funding that we can provide is actually enough uh, to be able to sustain them from this repeated round uh, of closures that they have uh, experienced. I am um, currently finalising and should be ready for the Executive on Thursday. Um, the grant which will um, look at those traditional pubs who have been closed um, virtually continuously um, since March of this year. Um, and in the long term, revitalising our tourism and hospitality uh, industries is the way that we will be able um, to help our pubs to, to sustain themselves. In 2019, in Northern Ireland, tourism um, and hospitality had over one billion, contributed about one billion to the economy and employed around 70,000 people. That is an enormous contri contribution um, to the overall economy. So, driving forward tourism will help uh, our hospitality uh, industry uh, to get back on its feet again. I call Rosemary Barton. Thank you, Minister. Thank you so far for. <clears throat> your statement and some of your answers. Minister, I heard your party colleague refer to tourism in a number of places in Northern Ireland. However, he forgot to mention his home county. <laughs> Minister, can, can you um, inform us this, this morning in this House how you intend perhaps to market the beauty of the lakes in Fermanagh, especially for trade coming in to Belfast and Get, getting them to move west into Fermanagh and further along to Donegal. Fermanagh is indeed a very beautiful county um, and uh, very, very important uh, to the tourism industry in Northern Ireland. And I recently uh, was down in one of the very large um, sites in Fermanagh uh, overlooking the lake and it was absolutely beautiful and wonderful to see it. Um, in, in all its glory. Um, we do need to make sure that tourism covers all of Northern Ireland so that it is not concentrated on, 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 on just Belfast or that wider uh, region or the North Coast, but that it covers all of Northern Ireland. And that um, is part of, I, I believe, two different kind of things that we need to do. It's driving the, the product and the destination of the tourism. So, um, 
Fermanagh, we will always associate with the fishing, the waterways, the golf, the wonderful hospitality. Um, and um, just uh, in Upper Ban, uh, this just a Banbridge, my hometown, we will also be offering new tourism product this year with the opening of the Game of Thrones exhibition and tour, which will be world uh, renowned. So what we need to do is to develop product in those different regions um, and then um, try to um, maximise um, our audience uh, with the, the kind of promotional activity that we do. I call Philip McGuigan. Very well, good. Uh, Ken Collier. Uh, Minister, I noted in the press yesterday that uh, the Minister for uh, Sport and Tourism in the South, Catherine Martin, responded positively to a TD when asked if she would uh, give consideration to extend an invitation to the organisers of Tour de France to Ireland. Uh, Minister, you, you should hopefully be aware that uh, I, I submitted a written question on the 15th of October nine weeks ago and then resubmitted again on the 2nd of November asking if you would, uh, sorry, if given the success of the Giro d'Italia Grand Partenza in 2014, whether you, you would work with your ministerial counterpart Catherine Martin, who you met uh, in this meeting in the South, to put together a bid to bring the Tour de France to Ireland, uh, in particular to my own constituency along the North Coast uh, and the Glens of Antrim. So, Minister, uh, given that major events uh, have the potential to drive participation and support, uh, contribute to trade, tourism, business, community pride, community engagement and econo economic growth, uh, will you uh, today give a commitment that you will look at this issue and work towards uh, bringing the Tour de France back to Ireland? Um, there are a number of these initiatives that are around at the moment. So there is an initiative around the World Cup. There's an around fi the Five Nations approach uh, to both, uh, indeed, uh, the soccer and the Rugby World Cups. Um, and, uh, of course, as you rightly said, we had uh, an enormously successful um, time with the Giro d'Italia uh, in Northern Ireland. Again, we've had contact with them uh, as well um, and um, would be happy to look at, at whatever is proposed in relation to the Tour de France. Um, these are really enormous, um, world-renowned um, events um, that really have a lasting impact. And I do believe that events tourism is something that we need to take forward. Um, and I'm looking forward again to engaging because um, we had an enormously successful um, Irish um, golf tournament um, in, in Ballymena in, in Galgorm um, just in, in the autumn, in September there. And I'm looking forward to engaging with the Royal and Ancient with a view to bringing uh, the tournament back again uh, to uh, Northern Ireland. So events tourism is hugely, hugely important. However, to strike a note of reality to the House, events tourism requires huge financial support. So we would have to work as a whole executive to ensure that that financial support was there to help um, to encourage events tourism. I call Jim Allister. To return to the question of the centenary, unfortunately much of the promotion uh, would have to rely on Tourism Ireland uh, by virtue of the subordination of Tourism NI. Uh, why then is there no mention in the statement of discussions about the centenary? And in checking what the Board of Tourism Ireland's attitude might be to these matters. Why do the minutes of the Board not appear on its website? The member makes an absolutely excellent point, uh, and one which I've made to Tourism Ireland myself, and which is why I'm still awaiting on the revised plans. Members, that concludes uh, questions on this statement. And ask you to take a raise for a moment or two, please.